In this video, I have this temperature sensor. It is also a motion sensor. Yeah, that too. Uh, this temperature sensor and also door and window sensor. Okay. This temperature and... Yeah, it's a humidity sensor. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Um, uh, temperature and humidity and... What? Uh, yeah, you forgot accelerometer? This sensor with many features. Yeah, it's also an um, ambient light sensor. Anyone else? Right? Yeah, man, it's an alarm sensor, obviously. In this video, I'm gonna install and adopt and set up this all in one sensor from Unify. Anyone? That good? We, we good now? So yes, as we've clarified, this is a sensor with many functionalities. It's called the all-in-one sensor from Unify and it's in the protect range. So this is with cameras and the floodlights, etc. So interesting device. It's not a new device. It's been out for quite a while, but I finally got one and I'm going to set it up. I'm going to see what all the different sensors do and then I'm going to install it here on this door, I think. I think that's probably the best place to put it and I'll explain why. So um, this is a very small sensor uh, with that amount of features in it. So let's get it out of the box and let's just have a, a little rummage about and see what it is all about. So I'm just going to open it here with my OHS approved utensil. Eh. But I expect it whoops, to be unified and be lovely packaged. Hello. There we go. All right, and straight off the lid we have, was that the quick start guide, smart sensor? This is, it must be the quick start guide. All right, what have we got? Right, so this is the itty bitty um, little capsule shaped device. Um, this weighs only about 50 grams without the battery. So not a very heavy device. Um, and it does have all of those sensors. It has, and I need my notes because there's so many I can't remember. It has a motion sensor um, from five meters uh, or up to five meters it can detect. It has a, a magnetic entry sensor. So you put that on the door and window. I'm gonna use that on the door here. It has an accelerometer um, for, you can use for garage doors to open and close it. It has a temperature sensor. It has a humidity sensor. It has an ambient light sensor, which is useful, I think. Uh -huh. And then it has an alarm sound sensor. So if you have an alarm that conforms to one of two standards uh, within smoke detection, and gas detection it is, an alarm pattern. Uh, I'll put those on the screen there. Um, this will actually recognize that alarm pattern and give you an alert. That is kind of neat. I don't know if I can test that because I don't think we have those alarms in Australia with those uh, standards, but that's really neat. Um, and then it also can come with a water sensor that detect water for leaks and stuff under your sink or whatever, uh, but I don't have that attachment. Apparently it only comes if you buy three of them. So I didn't get that, but that also comes. So that it really is an all-in-one sensor. Um, let's see what else there is in the box. So here is the little, yeah, what is it? Bullet battery shaped, anyway. Um, here is the bracket, that is not anything, okay. That's the bracket for mounting it on an angle. So that is actually angle, if you can see it properly. Um, yep, like that. Then there is a bunch of screws there, very neat like always with Unify. And then this is the magnet, which you obviously connects to here somewhere. There's a magnetic sensor um, and that is for the windows and doors. Um, so I can put it in the door, I can see when the door's open, which is actually quite useful um, for many reasons. We'll get to that when I install it. And then what else is there? Um, this is the scan here to get started. Okay, and there's a CR123A battery in it. Let's just see if we can get it out. Let's just take this off here. This 
And uh, so there's, you gotta pull that off to make that sticky. We're not gonna do that just yet. And then this, is it, does that just come off? Yeah, do I just pull? Eek. I can pull this tab, which is gonna enable it. I don't wanna do that just yet. I just wanna get the back of it off. Unify six required, it does say here. Oh, I didn't know that. So luckily we do have a six pro here, which I installed early in another video, it's like there. Um, so you need Unify six to make this work. So this connects via Bluetooth to an access point. It's not Wi-Fi. Talk about yourselves while I figure out how to get this back off. Right, so it has this tool in here, which I missed before. In the box, there's this itty bitty tool here. Is there anything else? Oh, there are actually, yep. Okay, so here is some more sticky stuff. So we can uh, attach it a few times. That's good, backups, wider ones, yep. Okay, so this little tool apparently is what you use to open it with. <laughs> okay, right. So sometimes it helps to read the instructions. Um, right, so there's the little battery. This is C, uh, CR123A, and these are readily available. Um, they're a three volt battery, and in Australia they're about $4 or something like that. You can get them in bulk. Uh, I don't know how long that should last. I think it's about a year um, in the sensor. It runs at 77 milliwatts. So hardly anything. This is Bluetooth for you. It's really good for low power. All right, so. That's it. Um, there's some connectors there. I'm assuming that might be for the water sensor attachment, which I don't have. So that's what's in the box. A tool for getting the back off, a magnet, which you sit next to it, so it knows when it's open and closed. There is a corner mount, and there is some extra magnets and a bunch of screws. So let's install it on the door, and then we'll adopt it into Unify Protect, and then, I am going to see what we get in Home Assistant. I know. So I'm going to install the all-in-one sensor up here on the door. So that means I can use the, uh, obviously the door sensor to see if the door is open or closed. That is very useful, especially here in summer uh, or winter. If the heater is going in here, if the door is open, I can turn the heater off because there are children sometimes that comes in here and that happens. The children may be about this tall, but Anyway, so I can use that sensor. I can use the, um, the motion sensor to actually see if there's motion in here. So for example, no motion, turn off the heater, you know, stuff like that. Um, actually, I used that in, uh, in another video um, on the Sensibo, which is linked there, where you can see that I'm using another door sensor to turn the aircon on and off because we have guests that leave it on. Mm. Another useful feature. Um, I'm obviously gonna use the temperature, the humidity, and the ambient light sensor as well. Um, I can't use the accelerometer, I think. That's for the garage opener type thing, apparently. Um, but um, yeah, that's a lot of what uh, it provides that I can actually get benefit from by installing there. So let's do that uh, real quick. It only takes two seconds. And then I'll go and adopt it. Um, when I moved it around, I accidentally actually pulled out the tab here. So I think it's turned on, but anyway. Let's install it. So I'm gonna put that on the door here, with the double-sided tape around there. Eh, eh. See, now I press the button, you see the light there? Comes a little light, it's flashing there. So that probably means that it's, it's looking for something to adopt to. And we we'll put the magnet on the inside here and it should be level with the bottom of the sensor. Is that right? Eh, yeah, about that. Um, five to 20 mil from that, and it's about five, four. It's pretty close. I think it'll be all right. But that now means that if I open the door, obviously it's no longer detecting that it's closed or there. So that's now installed. That wasn't very difficult. Let's go into Unify Protect and see if we can adopt it and how, how that works. So we're in Unify Protect, and this is on my NVR, so my network video recorder, which I also did a video on, which you can check out there. And um, it is already here. So if I scroll down here to uh, all the devices, there's the UPSense ready to add. So let's add it and see what we get. Kind of, I'm keen to see how this works because of, of yeah, the sensors and stuff. How is it going to look? Anyway, we're adopting it, and hopefully it'll come straight in. All right, so we have. Sensor details, name, so we're going to call this office sensor, sure, that'll work. 
Uh, it has a Bluetooth MAC address. We can locate it. Well, we know where it is. It's right out there on the door. We can pair this sensor with a camera to associate them. You can view both elements together on the home page and access sensor readings without viewing that camera. Okay, well, it's not going to be exactly right next to it, but we can just put the office camera on here just to see what actually happens. Yeah, all right. It's sort of outside, but it's close. Okay. Um, yeah, mount and detection. Ah, so now we have to see where we've mounted. Well, we've mounted it on a door, so that makes sense. If you mount it on a door, you obviously get the door sensor open or closed. If you mount it on a window, it might work slightly differently. Should be the same, I thought. Maybe not. Garage, that's the accelerometer. We can see when the garage goes up and down. And the leak, which I don't have that attachment, the, the leak detection, or none. We haven't actually placed them. Okay. And what do we want to detect? Well, we want to detect motion and temperature and humidity and light. Now, this alarm here, um, yeah. So let me just show you. Let's just go to the product page for the all in one sensor. Uh, which is here. So you can see here, very, very small, I'll zoom in. Uh, it says, based on UL217 and two UL2034 alarm patterns. So if you look up UL217 alarm patterns, you get this uh, global spec for um, requirements for a smoke alarm. So if your smoke alarm conforms to UL217, the alarm pattern when there is smoke detected is what this sensor can recognize that makes sense so i don't have one here i checked unfortunately but uh, if you do you can also sense the alarm so i am not going to tick that on here um, because i don't actually actually i could shouldn't i yeah let's just do that i can always take it off um, and now the battery life up here has gone down because we are detecting more things. So that makes sense. We are activating all the different sensors. So you can see as I take these things off, you can see that the, the battery life actually starts going up. Um, so let's just put alarm on for the minute and I can always take it off again when I don't need it. Uh, for value-based events, you can set a safe zone to draw attention to unsafe values. Now, I really want to do this in Home Assistant if I have to, but you can set safe zones. So here, for example, for the temperature, we'll say, well, what is the, what is a, um, alerts can apply to unsafe values? So what are my safe values? 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. If you use Fahrenheit, that's going to be about 600 million degrees, I think. Um, so you can adjust this. Well, the safe zone here is definitely, say, 10 to 30 because it gets kind of hot in summer in here, cold in winter. So let's just put that and see what happens. Um, and you don't have to set a safe zone, right? You can. And the humidity and alarm, I'll just leave those as is. So let's go next. And now you can see my battery life is short, but obviously we can, uh, we can adjust that. Alarm detection area. Consider that this sensor should be within 20 centimeters when it source the alarm. Right. This one definitely isn't. But if you do want to use it for the alarm pattern, there is a hint. Motion detection, consider that the sensor will track motion in the shown area. So that's about five meters away. Now I put it up quite high on the door, so that's going to work well. It's going to be below it apparently. Okay, good. Door mounted sensor, mount your sensor to a door shown below. That's exactly what we did, right? I've mounted door sensors before, so I knew that, but if you didn't. Um, so door status is now closed, right? So we're going to go and test it in a minute and it should go open. And one new device has been added. So now down here, we have the office sensor. Ooh, right. Is this door open? <laughs> oh, the door is open. Sorry, the door is actually open. That was just an example before. No, 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 it's correct. The door is open. Um, and we can see there is motion detected, I think. Maybe that's from just before. There's no alarm. We have 34 lux. So that is a light measurement unit. There's 34 of those. It's quite dark because it's rainy and overcast today. And it's 61%. Humidity is 23.3 degrees Celsius, which is correct. Um, so let's try and click it and see what we get. Uh, okay, this looks very unified, doesn't it? So it's paired to the office camera. Yes, we knew that. Oh, it's updating. Oh, of course, I've just installed it, so there's always going to be an update. We are now online again and it's been updated. So you can see we now have firmware version 1.2. So that's obviously the latest. Uh, the battery is at 92% and our sensor connection to the bridge, which is my um, 
U6 Pro access point, that is 50%. I'm guessing that's okay. I'm not sure, 47%. It's not far from it. So it seems to be updating, so that's all right. See here, our Lux has changed a bit. It's got a bit warmer. Uh, it took about five minutes to update, I think, something like that. So um, here's all the sensors. Door open, can I click on that? No? Okay, it just gives us last motion. No alarm detected, 43 Lux, 57%, 25 degrees. And then we have some activities. No activities yet because nothing's happened. This is where you would see door open, door closed. Um, and then we have the settings here, office sensor, uh, paired camera is the office, LED is on, uh, typical uni Unify stuff, events to capture. This is where we can change the things that we set before. So if I don't want the alarm, I can take that off. It will make my um, uh, battery life, la life last longer. Actually, I might take it off because as it said, it has to be within 20 centimeters and it's not. Apply changes and see now my battery life has gone up. up. So that's good. And you can see the sensor disappeared over here as well. So let me just go to activities and I'm just gonna go out and see if I can trigger the motion sensor and I'll close the door and open it again and we should see some activities here. Two seconds. Oh, nothing? Yeah, they're on the phone. Um, there's motion detected, door opening, ongoing, door closed, motion detected, motion detected, door opened. Yes, yeah, so I opened, the door was open ongoing it says then I closed it and then I opened it again so why is it not showing up here let's just try and refresh this there we go okay which is a refresh issue so now you can see here that we have motion detected when I walked out there the door was opened I mean it was already open then I closed it it was open for nine minutes nine seconds well that's kind of handy knowing to know let's see if we can get that home assistant eh? motion detected twice um, or oh, actually, that's oh, it's reverse order, isn't it? Anyway, um, yeah. So the activities are showing up. That's quite neat. Let's just try this camera thing here. When it says it's paired to office, what do we get here? So I can't see anything to do with the sensor on the camera. What am I missing? If you know, put it down in the comments below because I'm not sure. I thought I would see something of the sensor here. Isn't that what it said? Huh, odd. Anyway, that's the sensor, the all-in-one sensor in Unify. Let's now see how it looks in Home Assistant. So back in Home Assistant, um, if anything's to go by by previous experience with Unify Protect, it should just show up. So let's go to Settings, Integrations, and Unify Protect, which is here, 19 devices. Yeah, I know. I have many cameras. <laughs> um, what have we got? Yeah, here we go. UP Sense is right there at the bottom. So, um, and we even got the battery level as well. So let's see. UP Sense here. Okay, alarm sound detected unavailable. Well, that makes sense because I turned it off, right? Uh, if you'd enable it, that would probably come through as a value. The contact is closed. Yeah, I just closed the door. The humidity level, 59. Light level, 52. So this is, is this exactly what we're seeing over here? Let's have a look. I may have to actually refresh this page to get the right values, do I? No, no, that's live, okay. So we have 20 likes, is that what it said? Oh, 52, okay, it might not. Ah, it updates every five minutes, yeah. Well, that kind of makes sense, right? So you could say, well, something like my SwitchBot sensors, they actually uh, provide updates every minute, I think it is, but it depends on how much battery you want to use. So the light level will update um, probably soon, I would imagine. Oh, there you go, something just updated. Anyway, um, so it's going to be eventually consistent, <laughs> I would imagine. Motion detected clear, tampering detection. What's tampering detection? I hadn't come across that before. I'm not sure came unavailable clear tampering is that just if I take the back of it off anyway again if you know put it down in the comments below and then the temperature which is with two two decimal points very accurate um, 24.58 degrees and then the strength is not shown last motion detected last open last tampering detected okay so I guess I could enable those if I wanted to so that's what I get through in home assistant which is that's quite neat Right, so first thing I probably do is give it another name.
because uh, that doesn't make any sense here. So we call this office door sensor. I know it does other things than that, but that it's main purpose, the way that you set it up in the system. So I'm gonna call it office door sensor. Uh, let's put it in the, my office here and we're gonna update that. Do you also want to rename the energy IDs? Yes, I do. Please rename them. We also have some diagnostics down here. We have, you know, all of the various things, whether they're on or off, battery level as well, which is handy. Uh, I create a little video on how to monitor all your battery levels. So you know when to change batteries, that's also linked there or there or there. Um, all right, so we can use this sensor now um, to, well, do automations and our dashboards. So if I go back here to my uh, temperatures and I'm editing, and I can edit this by the list of temperature sensors and I call this office door office door sensor temperature it's down here somewhere there we go ba -da. so that now shows here is 24.58 degrees save that and then it shows up here on that on that panel so that's the simple way that you can do things let's click done here one thing i did want to do is that in node red i have an automation for the uh, blinds that I automated with the switch rod blind tilt. So over here under office, here is uh, do, 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 do. down here is office blinds timer. Now I could also create something about the lux, right? That would open or close. So we can get the current state and that would be the state of this entity ID office door sensor light level <laughs> office door sensor light level. anyway it'll work <laughs> uh, and if we say that the is less than let's say 20 because that's quite dark in terms of lux we can always adjust it but you get the idea we'll just say is it dark in the office then I can do a thing right uh, yeah, so if the state is less than 20, then we do a thing, uh, and that thing would be, state true, we wanna close the blinds. Yeah, got it. And if it's false, meaning it is more than 20, we wanna open the blinds, right? Now it needs to be triggered somehow. We could do that with any number of ways. We can just inject something that checks it every 10 minutes like this. So this is a injection thing, um, inject node in node red. And we can say we have a repeat and an interval every 10 minutes. And it will just keep testing. Um, and now we have an automation that checks if it's dark to close my blinds or open them in the office based on a unify protect all in one sensor. So that's quite neat. And it really is that simple. You just installed Unify Protect integration and the sensor is there. That was all I did. I didn't do anything else. So that's pretty damn simple. So um, I should mention the price because the Unify Protect sensor in the US is, I believe, $59. Let's just go and find it again. Yeah, it's $59 US. Now, there are IoT sensors that will give you uh, temperature and humidity and light and everything for a lot less than that. Um, I haven't come across any that do all of them in one for the same price, but it would be about, I'm guessing, about the same price for a sensor. They do exist. Um, but having light, motion, and temperature, um, and humidity for that matter, in one sensor, it's quite cool. That, I mean, I like that. Um, and, it, and the door closing. All of that in one is quite neat. I, I like it. Now, the problem is I have, I'm in Australia. And this sensor in Australia is almost twice the price. It's like $140. <sighs> it makes it a hard argument. It's really nice. It's really well made. It is Unify. It is going to work. But $140 for a sensor, it's almost the same price as an access point, right? So, I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, is it worth the money? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. It's definitely working. It's super simple to set up. I mean, you saw me just plunk it up, put it into Protect. It's in Home Assistant. Like, it's really, really simple. Um, it's just, it's a little bit expensive 
I think, for a sensor. Especially in the world of IoT, sensors are very, very cheap. So let me know what you think. I'm not sure. So if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed seeing a sensor inside of Unify Protect, um, and if there's anything I missed, um, I should actually mention that it's an indoor sensor, not outdoor. I don't believe it's outdoor rated, so don't put it outdoors. Um, but yeah, if there's anything I missed, put it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. And I'm consider subscribing if you like the content. Hmm. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video, which could be something Unify, could be something else. I'm not sure. Alrighty.